Hey everybody, Zangano here from Zangano431.tumblr.com and we are watching another replay from MLG Columbus. This is the game Dignitas Joe from Sweden facing off against the legendary July Zerg from South Korea. Going to be a very interesting game, TVZ. Very fun matchup, two very awesome players. Joe, very good at his macro. July, very good at everything because he's Korean and I don't know if you guys uh, remember Brood War very well, but July was a legend back in his day, and I am ecstatic to see him playing StarCraft 2. Now, looks like uh, ooh, looks like uh, we do have something interesting right off the bat. Joe is not going to put a supply depot up near the front of his base, so obviously he doesn't suspect... I don't think he suspects cheese or uh, anything like that. I mean, nobody really cheeses in these bigger tournaments and let, like in the sense of like six pooling or anything like that but um interesting move for the Terran I would understand that in a sense that if you look at it walling off with supply depots is not the smartest idea actually now you see he's getting his racks with a good timing actually uh, it's uh, 13 racks which is a sign that he's probably going to do something early aggressive and that's actually a pretty early uh, you know what? I'm not even going to pretend that I know uh, the Terran timings better than he does. So this could just be normal as hell, but uh, it could be aggressive. Oh, never mind. There's a second Rax. There's a definite sign we're going to see some aggression. July Zerg is in a rough spot, though, because he got his 15 hatch. And he's going to grab his... Oh, he's going to get his gas right away, too. So this is another very uh, interesting opening. The Zerg is getting for a hatch first, so he's going to... Hope he can do this. He's at, um, might be in a little bit of a pickle, depending upon how fast those Marines come out and how aggressive he decides to play with them. Now, the barracks is already up, so either he's going to go two racks into an expand, or he's going to go two racks into pressure. And I think that if he can get the right timing window, just because of this hatch first build, July could actually be in a hard spot if he pushes right, but um, obviously the spawning pool is almost finished, so that window is pretty much closed by this point. I think he would have had to have get, gotten that uh, Rax earlier if he wanted to do it with some two-gate heavy pressure. He is going to poke, though, with these two, which is fine. I mean, put the Zerg on his toes. You have to remember that Zerg completely left blown. You see he's, making, uh, he's trying to do a little bit of a bunker rush, but... It's not working. It's, uh, it failed. July responded appropriately. So the idea is when you make, uh, when you attack Zerg, Zerg, when they are happiest, is when they're not being attacked because their larvae are either going to be workers or military units. Forcing them to make military units puts them behind on drones. So constant pressure is always a good idea. As you can see, the Zerglings have been forced to be made. Joe going to micro away to lose as many of them as possible. And he still manages to fend it off, but still, that was at heavy cost to our Zergy friend. As the unit count shows, Show has gotten ahead on the worker count. And unfortunately, uh, well, now that, now that July has lots of Zerglings, he might try to do a push, but that wall is not going to work out well for him, and he's backing off. But Joe not expanding. Oh, but never mind, he is building his command center right there, so either he's going to use it for extra. See, he's got his rally already set to these minerals, which makes me think that he might just be using this for uh, extra mules, which means he might be doing some sort of interesting mid game type build. Now, July is on two bases, he's running quite well. I don't see any queens yet. That's rather uh, poignant, actually. I don't see any queens at all, but he is building a baneling nest, which is a definite sign he's going to go for a baneling bus, so he's definitely doing an all-in type build here. And Sho, moving out with some marines, could catch uh, him in an off position here, which could be, uh, you know, very bad. Shattered Temple has these grassy areas here which makes sneaking into that person's base, but he's going to see it here with his overlord, which means July Zerg is obviously going to react appropriately to defend his base. Is he going to get a good surround here? He does get a good surround. That is an excellent, excellent move, and he just wipes out those marines. So, Baneling Nest is finished, so he's probably going to start warping in his 
Banelings any second now. And there are the Banelings. They uh, destroy the supply depot. There you go. He The wall is down. The Zerglings are going into the base. Could this be the end of the game? Let's see. The, the Zerglings are attacking. Attacking. But uh, they are getting reduced in number, but he's killing tons of SCVs right now, actually. And those Zerglings are annihilated, but as we do know, Zerglings are relatively... Oh, look, here is another set... Oh, never mind. Is he going to go for it? Oh, no, 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 he's not. So as you can see, that put July Zerg ahead on workers with uh, relatively cheap amounts of Zerglings. So now, confident that he has made up for his uh, loss in the early game, he's now going to go grab his third. Smart, smart plan. Now, well, what are we going to see from our friend Joe? Joe must be under the pressure. He wanted to do a little bit of a mid-game push, which failed. So now he has to either expand or do something else. He does have a factory down. He cancels the third barracks, and he just moves the factory there. And now he's building two star ports. So we're probably going to see our good old m and m, &M play. And uh, the factory is either just going to act as a wall or, yeah, it's not producing anything right now. And doesn't look like it's in a spot where he's going to put an extension on it. So it's probably just going to act as a wall and he's just going to make marines and mm, dropships. And do a lot of drop play, which is very annoying to the Zerg. And it also has medevacs for a uh, straight up army. As for July Zerg, he is building another hatchery. Taking his third, and he has his queens now up. Uh, I don't know why he's not building a third queen right now so that he can move it to his third base, but he is obviously the professional, and I am obviously not the professional, so I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. But July Zerg, and if you look at the food count, is way ahead, macroing very hard because Joe's lack of a successful aggression means that July is in a very good spot to just keep macroing up. And as you can see, Joe here, uh, needing to keep himself into the game, is now taking his natural, while July takes his third. Already behind, playing from behind, Joe is going to need to do some sort of interesting play here to get back into the game and beat our Zergy Zergy friend. Grabbing a Roach Warren and another Baneling Nest. Okay, there you go. It's a good July Zerg. <laughs> I was kind of curious there for a second, like, wah? <laughs> but, obviously, you know, that happens time to time. The third is complete, and it's gold minerals, so they're going to see a huge influx of resources from July Zerg. Already 20 food ahead of show. Lots of Zerglings, lots of, uh, got great map presence. Probably going to deny Joe his third unless he takes this one here by breaking down these rocks, which is a fairly safe thing that I should do. He gets a tech lab onto his factory, so probably going to see some tanks. And he's actually side capped right now, so he can't build anything, but he is. Ooh, look at this. He's got tech labs on his starport, meaning he's going to do some banshee harassment. Meanwhile, we've got an evolution chamber finished and Lair coming into the game. 12 minutes in. That's a very late layer. Lots of early game economy. Interesting thing. But, as you can see, he already suspects or scouted that opening. So he has both a spore crawler. Oh, there it is. So he there's already one banshee out on the field. And so the spore crawler is going to be made to fend that off. And is he going to... He's just going to... Ooh, he found a nice sweet spot where he can just get some drone kills. Hopefully July can handle this. Uh, does he have another queen? There he is. Yeah, he lost one queen already. Because I, of course, missed the harassment there. And in production, he is making five roaches. He's researching roach speed. And... If I do say so myself, he's making five? Five roaches? And on the side of Joe, we have got tanks. We have got siege mode. We've got plus one attack. We've got banshee cloak. We've got... Marines. No Medivax, oddly enough, but um, he may have a plan for all this. So very deadly, deadly size, uh, but he is creeping up on July as far as uh, unit count goes. As you can see here, 
he's only slightly behind now on workers, even though July has a base uh, upgrade to him. He has an extra base. Stim being researched now. So, what is July going to do? He's kind of in a rough spot because he's in, well, not a rough spot, but they're neck and neck. He lost his advantage, and now he's going to have to do something to get his advantage back. He's, oh, now he's getting attacked by the Banshees. And there's not enough spore callers to defend this. Are they going to be able to stop them in time? One comes up, two come up, three come up, and that fends off Joe's pressure for now. He moves on to the natural again. With only one spore crawler, this many banshees might be able to just power through it, but he does back off. He could get he is going to play oh, there we go. And uh is he gonna get to a safe spot so he can take out the queen? Yes, he lures the queen, kills the queen. Now he's going to take out that Baneling Nest before it can finish its uh, centrifugal hooks, which means Baneling Speed won't happen, and there you go. Baneling's are denied for a short time now, and he's probably going to rebuild that very soon. Yeah, he's already rebuilding it. I don't know, can't see where, but... Mm. Oh, there it is. He's building his Baneling Nest right there. So, Joe got a very effective attack there, got a lot of damage done actually, and didn't really lose much, and he's timing his attack right for the death of the Baneling Nest, so as you can see, now Zhou is actually a little bit ahead in food, and he's like, doing an excellent timing attack, killing off the Banshee Nest, or the, sorry, not the Banshee Nest, wouldn't it be awesome if they can make Banshees, killing off the Baneling Nest, which means that these Marines have nothing to fear, but Zerglings, which they can easily handle, so he's going to wipe out this third easy, easy Lemon Squeezy. And so, there you go. Marines move in. Siege tanks blow up the tanks, but then the uh, Zerglings try to get a surround. They get a surround of the tanks! Ooh, Joe kept off position. His tank's not protected. These Zerglings, or these roaches, are just going to do massive amounts of damage. Just that shut down very fast, and he... Does he get the expansion? He doesn't even kill many drones. He just kills one spore car. Oh, but the attack has been defended. And he takes out the third. Oh my god. July so far behind now. This is massive amounts of damage. The drones are just getting shelled by these tanks. And Zerglings are just trickling in two at a time. Getting annihilated before they can do any damage. July back against the ropes. And July GG's. And that is the end of the game. Show with a very good timed attack and very good harassment and pressure, keeping him on his toes, keeping his drone count low, and eventually taking the lead. Very good game, good back and forth, and I will see you guys next time.